Retrospect Backup Software offers several wizards to perform various operations within the program. First you can choose Backup, and then you get the Backup Wizard, then you can click Next, and then you get a choice. Do you want to back up my computer, my computer and computers on my network, only computers on my network, or let me choose? In this case we'll go ahead and select let me choose and click next. Then Retrospect will list for us our local computer with the local disks and any folders we may have defined as subvolumes during previous operations, any disks that we've accessed using Microsoft networking, as well as any disks that we've accessed using the Retrospect client software. If I choose my local C drive, I can click next, and then Retrospect will give me several options. Do I want to back up documents and settings, operating systems and applications, pictures, music, movies, Microsoft Office documents, which includes PDF documents, and all other files. This will allow me to selectively choose individual items to be copied, reducing the overall total size of the backup. In this case, we're going to leave the default and click Next. Then Retrospect will ask us what type of backup device do we want to write to? In this case we can choose hard drive, and we can choose our local hard disk, and we can specify a path or leave the default path. Typically you won't back up to the C drive, but for this, this demonstration we're going to go ahead and choose it. We're going to click next, and then do we want to back up now or do we want to back up later? We're going to go ahead and say later so that we can actually create a schedule. We click next, and then Retrospect will ask us what time and what days of the week we would like to run the backup on. Then we can choose next and it will ask us do we want to backup using multiple backup sets or just one backup set. In this case we're going to choose multiple backup sets and click next. And then Retrospect will ask us do we want to use seven backup sets, one for each day of the week, or two backup sets alternating each week and we can actually specify specific days of the rotation. If we choose 7, we can click Next, and then it will list for us a logical name for each of our backup sets, corresponding with the days of the week. When we click Next, it's going to ask us do we want to compress our data. This uses the software data compression in the built into the Retrospect software. If we choose next, it's going to ask us if we want to use any kind of security. So we can specify password only or DES or AES encryption. In this case, we're going to leave this with no security. We choose next, and then it'll ask us if we'd like to use something called grooming. Grooming will purge out old data when backup space is needed. In this case, we're going to have Retrospect ask for a new disk if the current disk were to fill up. Then we go to next, and then it asks us to name our script. And we can call this my script or my backup. And it really doesn't matter. And we're going to go ahead and click next. We click next, and then it gives us a summary. What our source, our selecting options, destination, and then our schedule. We can also have it backup now, or if we uncheck that, we can click finish and it will create a backup script. Once we create the script, we can go to Automate, and we can go to Manage Scripts, and it will show us our backup script. If we choose that script and click Edit, it will take us back into the wizard, and it will allow us to edit the settings that we previously used, just by clicking Next, and then answering some of the same questions we asked previ answered previously. Or I can go to Advanced Mode, and Advanced Mode will show us the script in more specific detail. The source was Drive C. The destination was backup sets for each of the specific days of the week. We selected all files except cache files, and then it gives us our specific schedule a little bit farther below. We're going to go ahead and cancel this. And we can close this window also. And now you can see that Retrospect has a very simple way of setting up a backup schedule. Retrospect also has, offers a restore wizard. By clicking on restore on the left, we can go ahead and we get the wizard for restore, and we can click on next, and then it will ask us what backup set we want to restore from. In this case, we'll say backup set A, 
and then we'll click Next. And then after we click Next, we can choose the snapshot that contains the backup data. And we choose Next, and then we're given several options. We can restore the data to the original location that the files came from, or a new location. By selecting New Location, I can pick a new folder and restore the data to a new folder on the drive. We create the folder, and we define it as a subvolume, and we click Next. And then we can tell it we want to restore files or folders, or restore everything to that folder from the original backup set snapshot, deleting all contents that exists in the destination folder. In this case, we're going to say restore files and folders because that will not delete any files during the restore process. We click Next, and then we can go to Selecting Files, and it'll allow us to actually go in and pick the individual files we want to restore. Anything with a check mark has been selected to be restored. We click OK, and then we click Next, and then it asks us some additional options. In this case, these options are referring to whether Retrospect should delete files during the restore process. In this case, we're going to say never. And then we click Next, and then it gives us a summary before we actually start the restore. If I click on Start, then it's going to restore the data from the Dell folder to this new folder called My Restore Data on Local Drive C. And then we click Start. And then it will begin to do the restore. And once the restore completes, we can actually go to the drive and we can see that data. So if we go to the C drive, we should have a folder called My Restore Data. And inside the My Restore Data is the individual files we asked Retrospect to restore. If we return to Retrospect, we can look at some other wizards. If I go to the duplicate option inside of Retrospect, it will give us a wizard by clicking on Switch to Wizard Mode, and we click Next, and then with the duplicate, Retrospect copies the data in the original Windows format from one source to another location. Typically, you would copy to a folder from the source. So in this case, we can actually copy from our Dell folder, and we click Next, and we tell it we want to do these specific types of files from that source folder. And as you can see, if you mouse over the items, Retrospect gives you information about those items. And we click Next, and it asks us where do we want to store the files. So in this case, we can create a new folder by clicking on Show Folders, clicking on the New Folder button, and call it My Duplicate, and Create. And we define that as a folder. And now we can choose it, and we can click Next, or we can actually start now. In this case, we're going to go to Next, and it asks us if we really want to replace the contents of the folder and we click Replace, and then we, do we want to do it now, or do we want to schedule it for later? We're going to go ahead and schedule it for later, click Next, specify our times and days of the week we want the duplicate operation to take place on, and we give our duplicate script a name, and we'll call it My Duplicate, My Duplicate Script, and we click Next, and then it gives us a summary, and we can duplicate now, or we can uncheck that and just click Finish, and then it will complete that process. If we click on Duplicate again, it will take us back to the wizard and allow us to reset or change those options. These duplicate features are new to Retrospect 7, and they're very powerful, making the use of Retrospect very easy for most users.